Hey, everybody. I'm Steph. I'm Michael. Today we're checking out Nucleum. From Board and Dice. Yes. Hey, check it out. I get this cool. Yeah, because we worked their booth the last Gen Con. That's week. right. So I can proudly wear yeah. the Board and Dice shirt with the cool little meeple going up and do the big mother. Mother die, I guess, is uh, That's right. you know, what you can call it. <laughs> Nucleum is a really heavy euro. It, don't yeah. be too scared of it because... Yeah. It, it's a nice big euro, the first yeah. board and dice. You know their company. You know their games. It, it falls right in line with their other games. It absolutely does. Yeah. So, and if you love games by Luciani and Turksy, uh, then you will likely love Nucleum. Nucleum plays one to four players and plays, according to the box, sixty in 60 to 150 minutes. However, let me tell you, it's probably going to be a lot, lot longer than 60 to 150 minutes your first time. Once you've been playing it several times, I'm sure you can get that time down quite a bit. Well, he says 150 to 600 minutes. You're not far off from last night. We, we had a long game. We had a that. long yeah. night. Yeah, so, it, was, it was a bit to get through that. But it was a four-player game last night. So that's what happens on big four-player games. So, Lots of choices, crunchy decisions. So thanks to Board and Dice for sending us this fantastic uh, copy of Nucleum, which is not quite out yet, um, but uh, hopefully going to be released pretty soon. I know Spiel, they'll have it, and then after that, it's probably soon around the corner available here. So. Yeah. Uh, but they did not give it to us in exchange for this video. They gave it to us because they know we like to show you all the games. games. So, I will even help you with setup for Nucleum. This will probably be the rules video, and it's probably going to be a rules video and then a separate playthrough. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. Yeah, lots of rules. Lots of rules. We had to like put the board sideways. So it takes up a lot of space. This is a huge game, it's and I wanted to make sure that you could see where we're placing everything, um, and at the board going normally on the table, it chopped off the lower portion of my board and without going up any higher with the camera, which makes it so you, it's hard to see things, let's just go ahead and turn the board sideways for you guys. So uh, let's uh, describe a few things. You're gonna put the main board down here on the table and uh, you are gonna put all of the coal import tiles on the side that say minus one. Notice they say minus two on the back. They say minus three on the board. You guys can probably guess what's going to happen over the course of the game. So um, the VP flag token should go onto the 70 spot. And that's right here. I'm gonna just put it here on the side where the next to the sideboard. And it is called the sideboard. So um, there are Several action tiles that will look like this. The base action tiles have these dots on them. Separate out those uh, 20 action tiles with the dot, and you will shuffle them in with several of the normal ones. The normal ones just have a little meeple on it. All of the ones with letters on them will go with particular player experiments. Basically, uh, nuclear energy gets uh, gets researched in the 19th century in this timeline, uh, sort of an alternate history kind of thing. Um, and so we're all doing experiments and stuff to try to uh, refine our nucleum and use it even better. So um, rather than using coal, we are learning how to use Nucleum. So, um, so we're going to take our 20 base action tiles and shuffle in a number of uh, regular action tiles. Don't mix it in with the starting tiles, uh, which are the ones that have the A, B, C, and D on them. Don't shuffle them in with those. Uh, and it's different based on player count. So shuffle all those together. In a two-player game, it's the 20 base plus 10. Shuffle those together and make three equal stacks. Notice Steph has a stack up there with uh, with some of them in. Uh, these five down here plus five more in that stack is the first 10, second 10, third 10. That way you can sort of see how many are remaining in the game. 
So, um, you are going to separate out all of the uh, initial contracts, which, uh, what is, is it the one with the dots on the corner? I believe that is yep, the case. The, the ones with the too. dots in the corner, and the back is also has a dot in the corner. These are your initial tiles. There are four of them. Uh, you will give one of them to each player. And you will have to put that on your player board down here in the lower right-hand corner. So, the other ones, you're going to take a number of silver and gold tiles and put them in stacks. And then deal out two silver and two gold available for people to take and place on their player board. You'll also take three purple ones. These will never get replenished. These purple ones are basically first come, first served. Um, I can't take this to let Steph, to stop Steph from fulfilling it. These are available to anyone at any time. Um, so then we are, uh, you will shuffle up um, all of the milestone tiles. There are several of them. These are all end game scoring conditions. We have placed these on the sideboard on these four slots. And those are... Uh, four out of the eight that you will be using in the game. This game is ready to go for expansions, I would think, where you could have all sorts of different milestone tiles and, and contracts that could get added in uh, to this game without any problem. No, that being said, maybe it doesn't need expansions for a little while, but uh, that may be up to uh, individuals' taste. So you're going to place three Nucleum which are these bright green tiles, which will not show up at all on the green screen, I'm quite sure. And you're going to place them on these, these three spaces. Well, there are four of them in the game. <clears throat> I'll tell you how to uh, place that here in just a second. Um, and then you're going to do uh, the map setup where you're going to place this coal plant on this spot in... Uh, Risa or Risa, you, you will have to uh, forgive my horrible German pronunciations. Um, and that's going to go on this spot. Now, this power plant will never process nucleum. Uh, will never process uranium to make energy. Uh, so uh, it looks different from the other ones. The nucleum plants all look like this. Now, currently in this state, it can only process coal. However, whenever it has one of the nucleum tokens in it, you can see the little uh, see-through thing here. That's, this is actually a bright, the bright green cube I was holding earlier. This power plant can process uranium into nucleum energy. Is sort of, or nuclear energy is called nucleum, and that's where the name of this game came from. So, um, there are several cards which you will not need. All of these cards are for solo play. If you're not playing solo, get rid of them. This die, I believe it's for solo play. If you're not playing solo, get rid of it. You will temporarily need the cards with these gray backs. So you're going to shuffle those up and deal off the top three. Let me get to where we are here. Is this the one that I did? This one, yes. So you're going to deal off the first one, and you're going to follow this to change how the board is for the game. So the first thing is, where are we going to place a, uh, a neutral urban building? And you're going to place it on this spot here, and that is Dresden. So uh, Dresden on the map is right here. When you are placing these neutral buildings, you will favor the red ones first. Notice these red ones uh, will cost extra money to place a tile here. Uh, later on, you'll learn a little bit about that. That's where you'll place the neutral building. If there are no reds, you will place them on single spots over double spots, and you will do top or left uh, over uh, bottom or right. And obviously, these will this will go first, then this, and then this, if there is a priority to be had. First red, then a uh, the top left single, 
bottom left single, and then the double. So anyway, we're just going to place one of them. Uh, all of these neutral buildings have a little N up in the corner, and you're just going to place that right there in the city. So then you're going to look at this second one. This little nucleum uh, tile here, that says which power plant is going to get that nucleum and can immediately start processing uranium. And that one is in Glasshut, uh, which is right here. Um, then you're going to go down here and you're going to put urban rubble tiles if you're playing uh, with three or fewer players. Also, if you're playing with three players, place three turbine rubble tiles on turbine spaces that are marked with the four player icon. Uh, you won't see them on this side because this board is the one to two player side. That's why you need them. Uh, the three and four player side is on the back side of this board. There are a lot more cities. So uh, if you look here, you're going to place urban rubble tiles. If you see a city name like Praha appear twice, then that means you're going to put two of those urban rubbles on them. So again, you're going to prioritize red uh, tiles first and then uh, singles. And of those, if there are still multiple singles, then you're going to go top and left. So Martinburg, two in Praha, two in Leipzig. Uh, and so I've done that here. I've placed a red here and one up here in the corner. You'll notice there's a neutral building here. There's a reason for that. Here are the two in Praha, covering up these two red spaces. And here are the two. Where's the other one that I talked about? Martinburg. And there's the one in Martinburg. Technically, it should be here. However, these two are functionally equivalent. So I just blocked out the far space. Finally, you're going to look down here and you're going to put mining rubble tiles. Now, notice if there's ever anything with a... Uh, a three-player uh, icon down here. You don't have to worry about it for a two-player game because this city's not even on your map. So Brooks and uh, Joachim, what is that called? Joachim Stahl uh, gets one of these mining rubble tiles. Now, in the rules, it says place the mining rubble tiles in each of the city, uh, in each of those cities, but place it in the city with the smallest possible modifier. Now, that does not include these minus two dollar signs. What it means is, if there is a plus one uranium tile, that's a plus one modifier. These are zero modifiers. So the smallest of that is zero. So you're gonna place it here. Let's look at Joachim Stahl. Um, you've got two of them here. One of them has a... Uh, a plus one uranium modifier, one has no modifier, and hey, it's also red, we're gonna place that one here. That's why we didn't place it on the red here, because this has a positive modifier on it. These minus two dollars, these are not considered modifiers. I think uh, what uh, David told me is that uh, the rules were created before these minus two things were on the board. They These used to just be red, but people with colorblind issues could not tell the minus twos apart. So they added the icons as they should have. And so um, you can count on us to give you the right way of, of placing these tiles though. So um, then you're going to repeat some of these steps three more times. You're going to repeat the steps of placing the neutral uh, the neutral urban building tiles. You won't do any of the other rows uh, on this. So placing one more in Praha, that one doesn't have one on it at all, and placing one in Leipzig or Leipzig, I'm not quite sure how that's pronounced. So we've got one of these in Praha, one of these in Leipzig, and the other one did not exist. Now you're not going to need these cards anymore, you can put them all in the box. Now we've got no more cards left. Yay! Except for our player aid cards, which I got to say, are fantastic. Except for one problem. Except for one problem. And we and Steph will be <laughs> sure to point this out. So also place the five end game condition markers here on the track. In a, in a three or four player game, you're going to need two of these to trigger. In a two player game, you're going to need three of these to trigger the end game 
uh, condition to happen. And I'll tell you what those end games are. So we're going to randomly select the first player. Hey, that's me. Give them the first player token. And now we're going to do our player board setup. Each player gets a player board just like this. Uh, you're going to uh, put your uh, 12 urban building tiles onto the board. Notice that this one is a level one and it is a residential building. Uh, so we're going to place this on the level one residential building right here. There's We've a also, tiny picture behind it. There so is also. <laughs> it's the exact picture behind in Faded, isn't it, yeah. Steph? Yep. So the columns have a type and then the rows have a value. Absolutely. So um, let me get these uh, correct names if I can. Um, I believe these are residential buildings, factories, and laboratories. You'll also have on the fourth row down at the very bottom, some that are government buildings. Now, this is government and residential. You'll have the one over here is industrial and resident or factory and residential. And this is laboratory. I mean, sorry, factory and government. This is laboratory and government. So, um, you will also get your turbine tokens and your mine tokens. They must be placed with the three token side first, then two, then three, then two. Again, there's a little picture on the board to remind you where everything needs to go. Uh, you are going to get your 18 worker meeples, but you're only going to start off with two of them. Uh, you are also going to get four thalers. Uh, the thalers are the currency in this game and they come in denominations of one and five. Uh, there are also achievement tokens in denominations of one and five. You're not gonna get these at the start of the game, but trust me, you're gonna want them as soon as possible. Um, you've also got six milestone markers, which are these stars. Um, you will place three of them on the board in this spot. Uh, and then your other three just set off to the side somewhere. Uh, again, this is another one of the end game conditions. We'll get to that in just a bit. Uh, victory point markers go on the zero spot, as you do. Um, and the initial contract that you have has already been put at the bottom of your player board. All of your income tracks uh, you are going to place on the far left position. And I'll teach you how to read these in just a second. Uh, place your... Uh, Everybody is going to get one of these experiments. I have experiment A. My technologies are going, technology upgrades are going to be different from Steph's technology upgrades. She is playing technology board C. What you need to do is you need to place these so that they are shifted like one tick to the left. As you get these technologies, you will take these and you will plug them in into your board like so, which will give an always uh, on ability. Or if it's blue, they will be a one time only ability. You'll see the little times one on it. You'll just take those, do the ability, and then you'll flip them over to their completed side. But you start off with none of those available at the start. Whoa, I got my tiles on. So, Normally this goes next to my board, but since we are a little limited on space, I will turn this sideways. Place this back where it was. You will also be given those corresponding action tiles. You're gonna start off with four action tiles with icons on them. And one of them that is basically uh, can be used for air, for anything. Uh, and what is the terminology for that? I cannot remember, but I will get to it in just a moment. Just know that this will uh, allow you to take any one of the standard five actions at a discount of one dollar. So we're we're going to go over each and every one of these actions here uh, momentarily. So, um. The gameplay is continuous. We're going to start with the first player, and that one is me. And we're going to basically, on your turn, you're going to either 
play an action tile from the ones that are available. You're going to play it to the leftmost spot on your board. And then you're going to take both actions on the tile in either order that you want. For example, if I was going to play this tile, I would get one push on the uh, on the Thaler income track, and I would get a contract. I would place this up here, and then I would say, Steph, it is your turn. Yeah. Also, either before you do your actions, in between your actions, or after your two actions, you may complete exactly one contract. You can complete a contract that is next to your board, or you can complete one of these purple contracts. Now, this only happens whenever you are playing your action tiles. It does not happen when you're do it, gonna do any of the other two um, options that I'm about to tell you. So that's playing an action tile in which you can also optionally complete a contract. The second thing you can do, excuse me while I take a drink. The second thing that you can do is to play an action tile from your uh, the ones available to you, and you can place it anywhere on the board. So when you do, you're going to have to put one of your little workers on it because you are building a rail system. The rail systems are used to transport coal and or uranium from the mines in the case of uranium or these coal plants. Now notice that there are some long distance lines already available to bring the coal to Leipzig and Plauen, and this coal area exists that will bring the coal to Dresden. Nobody has to create this track. That is already there. So let's say I wanted to create uh, a track uh, between two places. I will also I will get the bonuses on these if the colors match either the cities that I'm connecting to or if it matches the rails that other players or myself has already built. So considering nobody has any rails now, if I were to place it here, I indeed have an orange match here and a white match here. So I would get both of these as if I had taken them as an action on my player board. However, this tile is now gone from me. I can't use it again. And you're gonna put your little meeple on there like that to indicate that you have created this uh, this railway section. Now, once this is done, once the link has been fully completed, this is now a completed rail line, flip it over, and then you're gonna get what's called an inauguration bonus. The inauguration bonus only works if it is a distance two or distance three line. There are no distance three lines on the two player side of the map. There are distance twos, and I'll explain those in just a second, and I'll explain the other side as well. Let me talk a little bit about this situation. Let's say I go here instead. The rail line is not complete, but I do have a rail there. I will get the contract. I will not yet get this uh, uh, one dollar income bonus. <clears throat> Steph could come along, and she could say, hey, I'm going to play a tile, and she could play this, Oh, look, the white line's up here. And look, it's a multicolor side on the other side. So it's going to trigger no matter what's on the other side. So she will get her ac action over here. She will get her action over here. And after she's done, I will get my connected action. And if there was a third line here, this person might get an action. Hey, now this is complete. We can flip this over, and now coal can go to the power plant and maybe be transported further out. Now, let's talk a little bit about that inauguration bonus. We both have one of our meeples here. So the inauguration bonus is printed here in the corner for each player that has presence here on this line. You're going to get two income bonuses on the victory point track. And that is going to be 
Oh, on a two-player side, it's for it's, it's for each one. Yeah, it says uh-huh. two times each. Two. So if I had both of them, I would get four pushes, not just two. Now this is different on the two-player side versus the three and four-player side. Yeah. On the three-player side, it is for each one you're going to get two victory point pushes. Only once. So if I were on the three and four player side of the board, I would get the two victory point pushes only once. Keep in mind it's different on two player game. On the three spot, let's pretend like this were a three spot and Steph were here. This one works a lot like the two player two line, uh, two segment bonus in which each player will get uh, two victory point pushes for each rail that they've placed. So that works like the two segment, two player side. So give those workers back to you. Give this back to you. So now let's say that I'd place this and Steph didn't want to help me. She might do, uh, do one that does help you. There you go. She could place it like so and get the one dollar income bonus and but not she would basically be giving up this side i would also not get this because these colors do not match so let's talk a little bit hammy yeah uh, let me take that one i'll take that one that's fine let's talk a little bit about networks this is a little important here um when I am placing my first building, if I have nothing on the board, I can place my first building anywhere. That means I don't have track anywhere. I don't have buildings anywhere. I have nothing. Let's say I build this residential building and I place it here, for example, in Zwickau. I will place it here. Good. I have a network of one city. Now, if I want to build another building, it has to be in Zwickau because Zwickau is the only city in my network. How do I get to another place? That is by building track. Remember, I said you can build track anywhere where you uh, anywhere on the board that you want. And then you can you will have another network. So let's say I built something way out here and I'll get my green bonus for it. Hey, that's great. Put my little guy out here. This is a network of of size one. This is a network of size one. These networks are not connected. So when I talk about networks, it's whatever this can reach. So uh, maybe Steph does not want to get shut out of having ability to get to certain networks. So let's say Steph were to create, I have one of, I do have one of yours. Let's say Steph wanted to come here and place one of her meeples on here. Now we both have presence. This is a network of two cities. It doesn't matter who owns the lines a little bit. It matters the fact that I have one of these lines. So this is a network of two for me. And this is a network of two for Steph. But not for James. But not for James. If I were to do something like this, also, these are now connected. That's the only thing that makes it a network. If for some reason it were a three line, this would be a network for me. This would be a network of, for Steph, but they're not connected because it were it was three segments. However, once the entire line is done, there's connectivity between both. Now, let's say I've done something like this. I now have a network of one, two, three, four. Oh, that those aren't connected. Sorry. You have a network of two and a network of three. That's correct. <laughs> but let's not do that. Let's go ahead and do it like this. Let's pretend like they're all mine. I've got guys on each of these. I've got one, two, three, four, five. And Steph only has two. So networks, although although Steph could ship coal or uranium using anyone's line, her network is smaller than mine. Now, 
it's important to get these little single lines, but they won't give you inauguration bonuses, so keep that in mind. Start handing these back to everyone. <laughs> I'll let you split those up. I just want to point out it is an, it is really important that I can use his railways. Yeah, I'll, yeah, it I'll get to all cost them. anything. Yeah. But you mentioned it briefly, and I just yes. want to point out that it matters a lot. It really does matter a lot. Um, now keep in mind you can only uh, I'll explain it when we discuss building, but you can only build where your network is. If you don't have a network, you can get a network. Just build some rail, but you might not have the workers. You got to give up some things sometimes. So you have one tile that can never be used as a rail because the backside doesn't have rail on it. And that is this tile here. So keep in mind, you can never use this on a segment of rail. It's your pity action. Also, be aware that you might not want to give up some of these tiles because it gives up your last chance to get certain actions. For example, uh, if I give up my last tile that gives me extra action tiles, then it might be a little difficult for me to get action tiles uh, in the future. I'd have to use my my special action tile for that. That was me last game. <laughs> so, um, so that's the second thing you can do is to place a rail on the board. The last thing you can do is to perform a recharge. That allows you to gain income and get your action tiles from the top of the player board, basically performing a big reset. So I'll explain a little bit about that in detail here in a second. Let's talk uh, first about gaining resources and what resources do. Um, these green cubes are uranium. If for some reason you ever need a worker or a dollar, you can transfer these to workers, and you can transfer workers to dollars. You cannot transfer, well, I, should, I shouldn't say dollars, I should say thalers. You cannot trade thalers to workers or workers to uranium. It doesn't go backwards. This is the top of the food chain, basically. So if I want, if I have one of my uranium, I can't use Steph's uranium. If I take one of my uranium, I can discard it and take a worker. But let's say I don't need a worker, I really need a thaller. I can discard the worker and take a thaller. Now this isn't all that great, but let me tell you, money can get tight. It tells you on your player aid also that it's, it's here if you forget, and your player aid card. Absolutely. So, um, let's talk a little bit uh, about playing action tiles and some of these actions. Uh, the first action I'm going to discuss is urbanize. This lets you place urban buildings on the map. So you're going to take uh, one of your urban building tiles, uh, that like uh, the one that I mentioned earlier. Where did I play? Oh, the one on Zucal. You're going to pay two, three, four, or five dollars. You do not have to build these in order. You can build whichever one of these 12 that you want. Uh, as long as you have the thalers to do so. And then you're going to place it somewhere in your network. If you have no networks, you can place it anywhere. That doesn't mean if you have no buildings. Remember, if you have placed a rail somewhere, uh, you have a network somewhere. Even if it is, if it's like this, I'm not going to be able to place a building anywhere on the map because I have a network of one in Brussels and there are no urban building sites here. There are only mine sites. So, um, as I mentioned before, the level four buildings are also government bu buildings. They can be placed into a black space showing either the government icon or the icon of its type. If it was government industrial, I could technically place it on either. However, there is a friendly placement restriction. If there is a single type space, you must choose the single type space. So if I were building a government lab in Dresden, I could place it here on this double space. But if I were placing either a government slash house or a government slash industry, I would be forced to place it 
on the single first instead of the double. Um, red urban sites do not affect and are not affected by this rule. So these red urban sites, they're the ones that cost you an extra $2 to build on. Um, there are also some tracks that cost an extra $2. You'll see that those are also red. Excuse me. Um, if the action tile, if this action tile here shows a minus $1 on it or minus $2, then you total you reduce the total amount by one or two dollars. Those those can be rather handy. Let's talk a little bit about the other action on that tile. Industrialize. This is how you place mines and turbines on the map. Uh, again, you have to place it within one of your networks. So you're going to take one of these turbines or mines. You're going to pay one, two, two, or three workers. You will take whichever thing that you want off and place it in your network. Obviously turbines on the round spaces, mines on the hexagons. Um, again, if you have no networks, you can place it anywhere. Um, if the action tile shows a minus one worker, much like the minus one dollar on the urbanize, you get to pay one fewer worker to place your piece. Now, you'll also notice on these player boards that there is a victory point thing in between each pair of these. If you create the turbine and the mine on the, on that row, then you're going to get a one to five victory point bonus or a level three technology. Hey, I'll talk about those in just a second. So you'll once you unlock these turbines, you're also going to unlock some sort of bonus. Hey, I did not mention it, but there is a variable bonus that's based on your experiment. I've got experiment A, so I've got this turbine bonus A, and that's going to go here underneath this turbine. These powers will become available to us um, once as we build these turbines. So uh, let's... Uh, oh, if the action tile uh, shows plus uranium, or if you build on one of these places that say plus uranium, hey, you're going to get a uranium. Ta-da! You can add those to any of your mines in your networks. So whenever I place a mine, I can place whichever one I want, the threes or the twos. Let's say I build this mine here. I'm going to get one uranium on my mine. Why one? I have one mine. Um, if when I build my second mine, let's say I place it here, I'm going to get two uranium because I have two mines. Let's say I place it here, I'm going to get three uranium because I have two mines plus one bonus. I can place these three uranium anywhere I want. They don't have to go on this newly created tile. I could place two of them over here and one of them here. But remember, each of these mines has a holding bonus, uh, holding limit on each of these, limited to the number of cubes on the, on the tile. So, um, remember, if you have no mines that can, that, you know, let's say all your mines are filled up and you get a uranium that you can't put anywhere. Hey, what can you do with the uranium stuff? Put it into a worker. You can turn them into a worker. Magic. Hey, but what happens if you don't have any workers left in your pool? One dollar. Hey, you can get a thaller. And those don't run out. You can always get, you always have a place to store a thaller, right? I suppose. I suppose. Let's talk a little bit about develop action. The develop action is what lets you get these really cool action tiles up here. If you'll notice that it says minus zero, minus one, minus one, minus two, minus two, you can purchase one of those action tiles at the cost that it says. So let's say I want the free one. Let's give me the free one here. In addition, I can pay an extra $2 to get a second tile plus the cost of the tile. So let's say I want this one here and this one here. It's going to cost me nothing plus two, because I want a second one, plus two 
because I want this one here. So for a total of four, I can get both of these tiles. It's very costly. And these tiles will go with the rest of my tiles down here. Yay, I can use them. They're all better than your starting ones. Yes, yes, indeed they are. So, if the action tile here that you play has a minus one on it, let's show some of these examples here. Notice, this is what all of those bonuses will look like. It's something like this. This means that the total cost is reduced by one. That is not, that does not mean that it's minus one per action tile that you take. It is minus one for the total amount. Place that back up here. Let's talk a little bit about the contract action. That's the little ball, the little ink, uh, a little fountain pen right there. Uh, for contract, you are going to take either a gold or silver contract and place it to the right side of your player board. Notice that there are there is a two thaler, one worker, one uranium, and two achievement stars. You've got those spots here on the right hand side. As you take a contract you are going to place the contract into one of these slots and immediately take this bonus. What do you get whenever you uh, complete a contract? Remember, you can do this anytime you play an action tile to the top of your board. Whenever you complete a contract, you're gonna get whatever's on the bottom of it. For example, this gives you one worker and one level one technology. I'll let's talk a little bit about the technologies here in a second. After I have taken this, we're going to refresh the offer. Uh, I did not mention it before, but whenever you take these action tiles, these do not slide down and refresh immediately. After I've taken the one or two that I want, we're going to scoot these to the right and replace off the top. If we get to the second or third stack of, of tiles, that's okay. Um, that just lets us know how close we are to the end of the game. So... Uh, that silver tile will refresh. If there are no silvers remaining or no golds remaining, the other color will fill in. Once both of these are gone, that is another one of the end game conditions. So remember, you can complete one contract at a time. You can't take the purple contracts. These are super awesome. Steph completed all three in our game when she destroyed all of our faces. Yep. Um, you cannot complete a silver or gold contract and a purple contract on the same turn. Why? Because they're contracts. Because they're contracts. You can complete exactly one per turn and only when you're playing your action tile there. At least that's how that's what we've seen anyway. Uh, we have not seen any sort of... Th there is one exception uh, to that rule and it's a, it is a level three technology on the D board, I do believe. Yeah, the player aid says additionally you may fulfill either a purple or a... Uh, silver or gold from your player board. Yes. So finally, let's talk a little bit about the energized action. That is how you will power the buildings that you have placed on the board. So let's say I had my level one residential spot right here. So in order to power this, I will need to have, I will need to provide it to energy. And when I do, I'm going to get two achievement stars, and some sort of bonus. It's on the other side as well. You can see it down here in the corner. It is a one income push for workers. Anytime you see the little, the little green arrow on the side, that means it is an income push, not an actual worker. So if I were to do this, I'm going to get two achievement stars, one income push, and at the end of the game, I will get one victory point. Is that end of game? Yeah, I do believe it is. So now, how do I power this? I'm going to either have to get uh, uranium to a nucleum power plant and then to my city, or I need to get coal from the coal plant, from the coal mines to the any of the power plants to my building. So let's say I had on a previous turn created this here. This is a rail line now. It's a rail line. As soon as uh, this one thing is there, it will flip over. 
So let's say that I wanted to power this now with, a, with the energize action. I will pay the, the thaler cost for the coal and everyone that I flip over is going to, everyone that I do, I'm gonna to have to flip over. So for two, I'm gonna need two coal. To do that, I'm gonna to have to flip over one, two of these coals, paying two dollars, and that is enough to get this. Now, the coal is going from here to the, to the power plant, and from the power plant to Zvikau. Now, let's say I was, I had my rail here, and Steph had her rail here. That's okay. The reason I have a rail here, maybe I'd put this in here, or maybe that was my first building I had created, and Steph had created this rail. Can I power this? Yes, I can, because it goes from here to Plauen to Zwickau using Steph's line. What does Steph get for it? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The rail lines are created, so I can use it to transport the coal to Zwickau. It's very sad for me. It's very sad for Steph. So, um, did I give you? No, I didn't give you my towel. Um, so, that will turn over and I will get all of those bonuses on there. Now, let's say that I could not power this one or I don't have any buildings at all on the board. What can I do? Is my energized action wasted? Not at all. You can power the neutral buildings as well, as long as you can get coal to them. Notice we have this neutral building up here. When, once we build this neutral building, I'm going to get two achievement stars and a level one technology. So um, anyone can power the neutral buildings. Uh, and you're not going to get any victory points on them, but still you're going to get some sort of benefit. So It's not connected to a factory. I was about to say, as long as someone has connected a rail to this power plant, then you can get coal from here to Leipzig to the power plant, and back to Leipzig. And then that would activate. Now, once the minus ones are taken, they're all minus twos. Once the minus twos are taken, they turn into minus threes. The minus threes can be used over and over and over again. These will never run out because they're printed on the board. Um, if for some reason you could access this mine or this mine, if for some reason these rail lines were also connected, you could bring coal from these cheaper minus ones. You don't have to pay the minus threes just because it's closer. And keep in mind that you can transport over anyone's rail lines. Now let's talk a little bit about uranium. In order to uh, use the uranium, you have to get it to a nucleum powered plant. So let's say I've got a mine down. I've got a mine right here, and I want to power this uh, this level one uh, building. Uh, that's going to be fairly easy to power because it takes one coal to do. Or I could use uranium as long as I can get the uranium to the nucleum plant and onward to Dresden, as long as there's a connected path somewhere, some way. I can use anyone's rails again. Uh, every uranium that I use is two power. Now, how now with coal you can take as many as you need. With uranium, each power plant can process only one uranium. How do I get a power plant to process more than one uranium? That's what turbines are for. With a turbine there, I can now do two uranium. With, good for that one right there. Exactly. I could have, if I had rails here, I could transport two of the uranium in, go down, power four, I'm good to go. Or if I needed three, I need three turbines. Now let's say I don't have three turbines and Steph has a turbine there. Well, actually, let's go ahead and do that example down here for the four. I've got enough for one. If I can't get coal down here to Praha, then I would have to use obviously the react the normal reactor and Steph's turbine. If I have to use her turbine, I have to give Steph one thaler. Yeah, pay me. Um, 
Is it if I don't have a Thaler, then you you I get one from the you bank. get one from the bank. If I'm out of Thalers, I can't refuse to pay her. Right. I have to give her a Thaler. Yeah, and it comes from the bank if you don't have it. Is that that is correct. I'm not making that up, am I? <laughs> That's good. That is the rule. <laughs> so that is how you use uranium. Uranium is going to be uh, a value of two. Yeah, and that's not what the player aid says. So don't oh, go, yeah. don't use the player aid for that because that's so, not what it says. Let me let me show you the player aid for energize. <laughs> the player aid for energize says on this line here, one uranium produces two energy for each turbine and nucleum token present. That is not correct. A reactor can process one uranium for each uh for each turbine and nucleum token present. Um, so keep in mind that the uranium always is two power. It's not two power per turbine. Unless you have the upgrade. Unless the rule is incorrect in the rule book. No, nah, I mean, I think that the rule is right. I think the the player aid is wrong. I, I also think... The Based on what I've read on the forums. So. Oh, so did, they did address that on the forums? No, but people are asking about... Got it. Using the turbines one cube per and stuff. Got it, got it, got it. So, so uh, you can also mix and match coal and or uranium from any number of locations. However, you have to process it all at one power plant. You cannot split between, for instance, Plowen and Glasshut. And then, obviously, you're going to flip the building to the energized side. That building cannot be further energized. You can only energize a building once, even if it is yours. So those are the five basic actions. Develop, contract, urbanize, industrialize, energize. You can take any of those five actions by using this tile, and it's a $1 discount, if you even need a dollar cost at all. For some reason, let's see, there's my fifth. There are also other little minor actions that you can take that you cannot take with the special actions tile. For example, one worker or two dollars. Eh, that's a little baby action. Uh, also, these little income improvement actions, you cannot do those with the special actions either. This is a one dollar income bonus. Uh, this is a one bonus for anything and... It cost me a dollar to do, but that could be uh, super uh, helpful to do. Uh, now, it's interesting to note, my five tiles are different, similar, but different to Steph's five tiles. Yeah, like we have the same stuff, I think, but they're in different orders on different tiles, different colors, and yeah. Now, let's talk a little bit about gaining technologies. Notice that these technologies have level one or level two, or the super good ones at the bottom, level three. So, as I mentioned before, you've got always on powers, you've got one-time abilities, you've also got what is called your ultimate goal. That's the one that's in purple. If you can get this one activated, then you are going to get some sort of uh, number of victory points at the end of the game for fulfilling certain conditions. Now, it gives you a strategy to work towards. Yes, absolutely. Now, let's say that I get a level one technology. I can take any of these level one technologies. I don't have to go in order. Let's say I get a level two technology. Let's say I don't like any of those level two technologies. What can I do? Well, I could take a level one technology if I wanted to. Probably wouldn't recommend it because the level twos are actually pretty good. But let's say I've got all my level ones and I get another level one. What can I do then? You can take a number of victory points. Is it victory points? Stuff? Victory points equal to that technology's level. So I could get one victory point instead of taking mm -hmm. any of these. Or for a level two, I could take a level two, a level one, or two victory points. Or let's say I've got a level three and there's really nothing else I want to do. Or I don't want to end the game maybe by completing all of my technologies, I could take three victory points. Not great. Or a smaller level technology. Yeah, yeah. So keep that in mind. That is another one of the end game bonuses. I will talk about those here momentarily. So let's talk a little bit 
about, oh, those little actions that I mentioned like this and this, these little sub actions are called subsidized actions. They're not one of, they're not the main five actions, uh, but they do give you something that it, it can often be quite useful, but they're not the main five actions. Yep. Anyway, what can you do? You can play an action tile here. You can play a railroad, uh, an action tile as a rail line out here. And the last thing you can do is to recharge. What you're going to do is, let's say I have put three of my tiles up here and I've bumped my tracks up to this level, for instance. So what you're going to do is you're going to gain thalers, workers, and victory points based on your income tracks. Now, I've got this thing jammed all the way over here, but I'm not going to get this much. And this is a rule that a lot of people miss because I've seen it on the forums. It's like, hey, I've got my victory point thing all the way over here. And what's to prevent me from just recharging and recharging and recharging and getting a whole bunch of victory points? Because you can't do it. Now, I'm going to tell you why right now. So let's say I've got it here. You can gain an amount equal to the thing to the left of your cubes. However, it has to be, you can only claim underneath how far you've gotten on your action tiles. So I am limited to nine thalers. I would be limited to four workers and a victory point, but my cube's not there yet, so I'm just going to get three. And I'm limited to five victory points instead of the six that I would normally get. Had I played one more action tile and then recharged, I would get 10 dollars and a victory point and three workers and six victory points. You should have done that. Going another time would not necessarily help me, but maybe I need this action before I recharge. So get your income is step one. Then place a milestone marker on the milestone track. Hey, remember those achievement stars that I was talking about? This is why you need them because you're going to turn in all, and I mean all of your milestone markers and go up at least uh, you can go up anywhere up to that number on the track. Now, let's say I turned in 10 markers, 10 uh, achievement stars. I could place on the 10 if I want. However, keep in mind, I can only place one star ever in this colored section here, in this times four blue section. Um, there are tiers, there are segments, and there is a zero space. This is a tier. Uh, so, excuse me. Sorry. This is a tier. This is another tier. This is another tier. This is another tier. This is a segment. Another segment, another segment, another segment. Notice the tiers and segments don't line up. The tiers and segments are different. So if I place this on the 10, I'm basically saying I'm going to try to get as many industries as possible because that's what this segment is. But let's say I'm not probably not going to do a lot of industries. I'd rather put this up by turbines because I'm going to get a lot of turbines, but I don't have 13 stars. I can choose to drop this down to a lower tier <laughs> or a lower segment as long as I don't have another star in that tier. I could even drop all the way down to the first tier or the zero level if I want. I can have as many stars as I want on the zero level. Probably wouldn't advise it, but you can. That's the only area where you can have as many stars as you want. So That's minus three per star. So but keep that in mind. Where you place this is how many points you're going to get for these four end game conditions. Currently, what we what do we have here? Every two guys on rails. I wish that was yesterday's. Oh, for me too. <laughs> industries on the board. Not even power, just industries yeah, it just looks industries, like. Yeah. Turbines on the board and residents uh, so max on the four, board. Max four, max four, max four. This is really... On yeah, the because edges. you only have four, right? Yeah. So, uh, and even this is not unlimited. Yeah. Limited to nine, I guess. Because you have 18 workers total. Anyway... 
at the end of the game, you're going to get a number of victory points based on where your stars are. So if I had stars here and here, I'm going to get seven points for every industry, four for this star and three for this star. Keep in mind, I don't get this because I can't have two in the same tier. I would not get seven if I were here because this is three per industry and four for turbines because they're in different sections. sections. If, kind of interesting. If you can hit 40, it's nine points. Boom. It can. And I will. <laughs> and I did. Now, <laughs> let's say I want to block Steph from hitting that 14. Can I do it? No, I cannot do it. When Steph gets hers, if she also wants to take 14, she can do so. Totally up to her. So, anyway, back to me. Let's say you haven't recharged yet. I managed to get 14. That's quite an accomplishment for my first round. Yeah. I'll tell you, you're probably yeah. not going to do it. Not happening. I will take this nucleum, which is in this segment, and I will place it on any of these three that I want. And then I'm going to get the bonus that goes next to it. This gives you a, a action tile at a minus two cost. Is that what that is? Okay. Is that, is that what that is? Yeah, you get a free tile from the... From the free tile. Free tile. Up here. This gives you free worker. This would have given one uranium, but hey, it's already got a nucleum in it. And this gives two thaler. Yep. And this can never have nucleum because it's a dirty, dirty coal plant. So, boom, I've got my stars there. Then what you're going to do is, uh, if you... Uh, if you Put your marker in the topmost milestone segment. Anywhere in this segment, you get a level three technology. Boom. Just like that for free because, you see, the level three is right here. Whoa. Finally, if you played your milestone marker on that top space, as I mentioned before, nine victory points. So, uh, then you are going to... Uh, if a milestone becomes empty, then you're going to do a King's Day scoring. That happens if Steph has already placed her star. And that opens up this spot right here. Once the last player has placed their star on the track, boom, do a King's Day scoring. Now, I might have already put my second star on the board. Like so. That's okay. Steph might have just gotten a lot of action tiles, and she comes in later. Boom. We do a King's Day scoring when she places her first star like that. Um, and I'll talk about that here momentarily. Um, discard all of the achievement tokens that you've collected on your recharge and retrieve all your tiles from the top of the board. One time that you might be forced to read uh, to... Uh, recharge is if this is completely full and you don't want to place another rail tile or you don't have any tiles here at all that you could place or you have no workers on which to place your railway tile. You might be forced to do a recharge. So let's talk a little bit about King's Day scoring. The owner of the highest milestone marker is going to get six points. The owner of the second highest milestone marker is going to be going to get two points. Yes, that can be the same player. No, you cannot have the same player on the same space. However, you could have the, the different players on the same space. And if something like this happened, Steph would also get six points along with me. And yes, there would be a second place scoring. So Steph would get six. I would get six. I would then get also get two. If we were like this, I would get st six. Steph would get two. I get nothing here. Everything clear? I think it is. Yeah. It's a nuclear. If for some reason this happened, milestone markers in the zero do not qualify for King's Day scoring. So, hey, why would you ever do a zero? Hey, let's talk about that for a minute. These achievement tokens can be hard to get on your first set of actions. It's a struggle just to get one or two sometimes. Yeah. Just starting out. So, let's say I had to place on the zero. I'm not eligible for King's Day scoring. It might happen. At the end of the game, I'm going to lose three victory points for every star I've got down here. 
However, I'm going to get a free worker and two free Thaler, in addition to whatever my income was. I think it helped me, actually. It probably did, because uh, Steph beat us by... Uh, did I mention Steph beat us quite soundly? Um, she had her first star down here, lost three points. Ooh, her 182 other points did not care. <laughs> so... Keep that in mind. It doesn't matter. Cared for you and James's score. It might have. Now, all of the all of the recharge things are listed here. Get your income. Put your star. Uh, disc them. discard. Yeah, check for uh, well King's Day if you if you're doing it first or second place. Discard all your achievement tokens. Take back all your action tiles. So that's all right there. Once all three of these is another end condition. Yes, and I was going to explain all the end conditions all at once. So, and hey, that's right now. So, when two of these end game condition token markers are done are used in a three or four player game, that triggers the end of the game. The end of the game is not yet, but it triggers it. It's almost it's almost here. In a one in a two player game, it's three of these. What do these five tokens belong to? When all of these action tiles are gone, whoever caused it to happen gets this token and three points. So basically gets three points and the token gets placed up here. Yep. It, it's true that it's, it's three points for all of them stuff. Yep. That's what it says right on the board. Got it. So, oh, it is three points right there. So you can put, cover that back up. When all of these tiles are gone, and remember... Gold fills silver, silver fills gold until all of them are gone. When all when all of the draw stacks are empty and four still remain out here, but the draw stacks are empty, boom. That is another end game trigger. When all players have recharged three times, boom. That's an end game trigger. Um it's uh I guess it's whoever triggered the last king scoring would get the three points on that, yep. I'm guessing. That is the third of the five end game triggers. The fourth of those triggers is when at least one player has done all eight of their technologies. Boom! That is the fourth end game trigger. Finally, the fifth end game trigger is... 70 points when one player has gone over 70 points. Boom, that is the fifth end game trigger. When three of those have been hit, notice there's a flag here and a flag here with a two-player marker on it. That lets you know the end of the game is nigh. Finish out the current round. I've got the first player marker, so we would go to Steph finishes her turn, then we each take one more turn each. Yes, you can continue to do uh, these markers. That's okay. Uh, you can do that. Um, you can continue to uh, recharge, but no more King's Day scorings will be done. Um, Um, and you could actually do a King's Day scoring if the if this was not one of the three triggers, it might actually get another King's Day scoring to happen. Yeah, that's why you can stay still here, so you can still fulfill the other. You can't fulfill the fourth and fifth, no matter when they happen. You yeah. could still do it at the end. End when everyone has taken their one final action, you're going to do a final scoring. If you have any more achievement tokens left at the end of the game. You could place a milestone marker on a tier that you qualify for. You're not required to take the zero. If for some reason I'm here and here, um, I mean, like five of these, I didn't get to 26 and I've got my six marker. I don't have to take the zero. This, this one is optional. All the other ones are not optional. This last one the, on final scoring is optional. However, you do not trigger any effects on this final scoring. You do not do king scoring. You do not take income. You're just gonna, you're just going to give up the rest of your achievement tokens. You're not doing a recharge. You're just putting your last token out 
if you even have any more tokens. I do believe these are, are these unlimited? There are three There's things that are unlimited. Six of them. There are, there are three things that are unlimited. Uranium, dollars, achievement tokens, and milestone markers. These are the milestone markers. So, mm -hmm. these and these stars are unlimited. If you run out of these, find a suitable alternative. I think... I recharge maybe four times in our game. I recharge three, three. or four. I think yeah. I think three. They give you six of them. I don't think you'll be recharging six times, but I you, could, I could be wrong. And remember, you can't just recharge, 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 recharge because yeah. I mean you're not going to be getting anything because you don't have any of your action tokens out. Yeah. So, um, you're going to score these milestones, these four milestones, based on where you are on the track. You're going to score your ultimate goal technology. If you have unlocked it, you will score any leftover resources. Every two uranium is worth a point. Every two workers is worth a point. And every five dollar are worth a point. Let's say, hey, let's say you've got three uranium. Well, this is worth a point. I've got a uranium left. What can I do with it? You could turn it into a worker where you might earn another victory point. Or if you've already got enough workers, you could turn it into a Thaler, which might give you another victory point. Remember, you can always transfer uranium to workers and workers to Thalers. Finally, you're going to get points for your energized buildings. Finally, remember these government tiles I told you about? You know why they're so expensive? If they are energized, you're going to get a victory point bonus of two victory points times every single uh, residence for this one in, in your network, in this network, wherever this is placed. Let's say I place this right here. I'm gonna get two victory points for itself and maybe this thing it's connected to and maybe this and this if they are also in this same network. If for some reason it's not in the network, then you're not going to get points for it. They don't have to be mine. Oh. They could be Steph's. Yeah. They could be neutral. It doesn't matter. Whoever's they are, and it doesn't matter if they're powered or not. It does matter if the government building is powered. So keep that in mind. Um, Otherwise, and, they're just going to give you points. These and, buildings. Yes. And finally, you are going to get... An income track bonus. Notice these last three areas are three, six, and ten points. If I manage to have all of my things in this orientation, I'm going to get ten, six, and six victory points for a total of 22. Notice that this is already maxed out. If I were to get additional bumps on this track during the game, I'm going to get one victory point every time that bumps against the, the ceiling, basically. So it could be advantageous to get this all the way to the end. James and I both got these all the way to the end. We both scored about 130, almost dead on even. So James and I must have, I think we have similar playing styles as far as that's concerned. But you destroyed us all. I and did. you were not maxed. You were not maxed. Yeah, that's interesting. Something else. You were doing something else and you did something else. That's for sure. So. Uh, but keep in mind, money is tight. We start off with four whopping dollars. Ooh, and two dudes. And two dudes. So keep that in mind. I'll make sure I'm all good and reset because I did do a lot of manipulation on our description. Now, there is a fantastic appendix in the back. Everything is labeled with a, uh, with a number on it. So if you don't know what something means or what an icon is, it's all here in the book. Further... There is a specific player aid for each experiment. This is all experiment A's technologies. I can always look at this at any time and not give away my strategy. Um, I'm not having to look at the rule book trying to say, hey, what does this experiment do in front of me? So, hey, sounds great. And now that we've gotten through an hour's worth of rules, <laughs> it, is, it is a super involved game but hey there's a lot of fun to be had here um don't try to take every action you have at once Why take 
Take little bite-sized actions if you have to. Just make sure you've got a good plan to get to where you want to be. And hey, you won, so hey, your 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 advice may be a lot better than mine. I was just doing one thing at a time. I'm like, okay, I'm going for that purple one. Okay, I'm going for that purple one. Nobody else was going for them. So I, I, I was going, I, I, I'm going for them. I was going for them, and you cut me off every single time. <laughs> I just want to do these things that are in front of me and not worry about everything else. So there was one purple tile. <laughs> uh, let me tell you, the purple tiles will often get you level three technologies. Check that out. And she got all of them, every single one. There was one that was had um, four industrial buildings. Yeah. I had I had two. You had three going for your fourth. Yeah. Well, I'm there was for it. I just went. I tried as well. There was one that had uh, complete eight contracts. I'm like, I'm about to complete number four. Steph's like, I've got seven. And I'm. That's what I was doing. Okay. Well, I guess I'm not doing that one either. So. <laughs> well, so, you, start with a, you start with one. So You start with one, but it's not purple. It's a little baby silver. Right, right, right. But that was my initial goal. Okay. Yes. I'm going to build in orange last time and then now this time is white so that's like gonna be i'm gonna go towards a white region that's just because that's my goal right now yep and mine were green regions uh the green region one interestingly has different uh different reward level than the other ones not sure why um maybe the green is is balanced differently i'm not sure maybe there's fewer spaces or something it's possible i don't know it is possible. But we're going to find out. And but we're going to find out. This playthrough right next. So if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, be sure to check out our playthrough. Uh, I will have a link below as well. Yep. And if you like uh, this teach and want to see more teaches and playthroughs like this, we stream every Wednesday and Sunday night at 5 p.m. Central on twitch.tv slash boardgamersteph. So, hey, come join us on Twitch where we play all, all the games. games. That's right. And uh, yeah, for those on Twitch, we will be right back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs>